We come to you every week with fresh editions of art and leisure. My name is Chioma Okwara. As usual today, we're going to tell about the recent happenings in the arts, culture and leisure worlds. Nigeria is blessed with creative people and we're here to celebrate them. Stay. Welcome back. Professor Ella Nasui is one of the art icons in the visual arts subsector. He was born in Ghana, but he's been living in Nigeria for about 39 years now. Yes, he came in 1975. He's a retired lecturer. He turned 70 recently, and the art community in Lagos decided to celebrate that landmark achievement of his with an exhibition and a discussion. Here is the art exhibition part of the celebration. They are of different ages, and this exhibition gives them the opportunity to see the different facets of life of Professor Ella Nasri. Professor Nasri wrote letters, and some were written to him. As a lecturer at the University of Nigeria in Suka, his salary came at the end of every month. He reads, and has also been written about. For more than 40 years, he has sculpted. He's worked with wood, clay, and metal. I'll pick an idea or a medium or a process and work with it for a very long time. You know, I didn't uh, work with an idea or a process once and leave it and go on to another one. I'll pick, stay with it for four or five years or more, you know, before it is overthrown by any other new idea which chances in. Professor Nasri says he's inspired by anything and everything. His work engages with and comments on African history, colonialism, the post-colonial condition, as well as the daily realities on the continent. He loves to express himself in an abstract form. His work over the last 30, 40 years has been one of experimentation. He started working principally in wood, and then for about a six, seven, eight year period, he worked um, in clay. Then afterwards, he went back to woodwork, some of which we see here today. The earliest works are, of course, the tray um, wall hangings that we see here, which are from the early 70s, even before he came to Nigeria. When he came to Nigeria, he did um, um, ceramics, clay work, but then went back to wood. And the second um, stage of his work in wood are the works that we see behind me here, where he used the chainsaw, he burnt the wood, and created these incredible patterns, you know, inspired by African um, um, culture, African um, symbols like um, Adinkra symbols, Uli, draw, Uli painting, and also um, CBD language system. Then went on to working with the bottle cups, the monumental bottle cups for which he's celebrated all over the world. El Anasui taught at the University of Nigeria for more than 36 years. Many of his students are now enjoying national and international visibility. His former students, Nenna Ukore, Lucy Azubike and Amara Chokafo, have their works in this exhibition hall. 
When I got into university, the university assigned him to me as my academic advisor. Then for the four years of my bachelor's degree in painting, two years first of all studying everything and two years majoring in painting. I used to go to him and show him my work and all of that and he always talks to me, not particularly or not only particularly about my art, but in in general about studying, about all sorts of arts, which which comes from the way you think as a person. This is a work I made my, in my second degree when I studied under El Anatsu. The work is called Latest Bags, Waxing Old. That's the title. There's a passage of the Bible that says, make for yourselves bags which wax old. But what it says to me is, People behaving, especially in Nigeria, we do or what the pastor says, what the church says, without questioning. Professor Nasui has participated in over 100 solo and group exhibitions, several biennales and triennales in different parts of the world. At 70, he still scouts. El Anasui is seen by many as a creative, sincere, generous man and a quiet leader. Wow, teachers now receive their rewards on earth. Thank you so much, Professor Ella Naswi, for being a role model. Now to a man many of us look up to, Prince Yemisi Shilon has endowed a professorial chair in African arts and design, the very first of its kind in any Nigerian university's art department. Art and leisure spoke to Prince and the first occupant of the chair. Take a look. Prince Yemisi Adedo in Shilon Professorial Chair in Fine Arts and Design was established in order to encourage research and development initiatives in the arts. It's an extension of the objective, vision and mission of Omoba Yemisi Adedo in Shilon Art Foundation. That is to encourage scholarship in Nigerian art and culture. And uh, the purpose of Professor Achia anywhere in the world is for philanthropists to donate money towards advancing knowledge and research in any area of human endeavor. And I felt, and I still feel, that Nigeria has a lot to show the world. Nigeria has a lot to sell to the world in terms of the richness of its creativity the richness of his culture, the richness of his heritage, that we don't have you know, research institutes or research agencies busy about promoting the scholarly and intellectual part of um, our art and culture. And that's why I intervened uh, in endowing the Prince Yemisi Adido in Shilon, a professional chair the University of Port Harcourt was chosen for this kind gesture. I'm very much worried about the parochialism of Nigerians as to wanting to do things only in their own area of birth. I feel I owe it a duty in my own silent way to demonstrate that meritocracy uh, is much better than looking at issue, issues from the ethnic and tribalistic uh, point of view. I have done something with the University of Lagos I have done something with University of Ife. I've done something with uh, um, universities outside Yoruba land. And I felt I should do something from, you know, somewhere out there. And University of Potakot appealed to me. John Agberia, a professor of fine arts and design, is the first occupant of the chair. He has enough on his plate. We will be able to look more deeply into um, researches that have to do with, uh, with uh, the, uh, the fine arts or the visual arts and design uh, in Nigeria. Very importantly, it's a platform through which seminars can be organized. Seminars in art, seminars in uh, visual art, seminars in design, design and art. And such seminars, of course, uh, ends up usually in uh, what we call uh, colloquium and from colloquium the results of those seminars are translated into 
working documents for the development of uh, the visual arts in, in Nigeria or in Africa. One of the activities that is very paramount, which uh, is very dear to the heart of uh, Engineer Yemisi Shilang, has to do with uh, integrating art or developing art from the children's uh, angle. Because the artists of today grew from somewhere, evolved from somewhere, and uh, 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 giving them a better uh, foundation will help deepen the interest in, uh, in the fine arts. And therefore, he, we are beginning with what we call uh, art competition or drawing competition for secondary schools in the Niger Delta states, which includes Rivers, Bayesa, uh, Akwaibom, Cross River, and Delta states. In August or September, we intend to have an art or drawing competition. Uh, the children of uh, these secondary schools will be invited to Portacourt, to University of Portacourt. The very best ones will be given uh, awards. This is one way to actually encourage and motivate them into coming to do uh, fine arts uh, and let the discipline grow. We are also going to have workshops also for secondary school students. The chair is a global thing. It's global in the sense that any artist, any scholar of art who is interested in working and having linkages with the chair is free to come in to join us, build and develop uh, the arts. Prince Yemisi Shilon is a trained engineer, lawyer, stockbroker, just to mention a few. He has over 6,000 art pieces in his collection. Before now, the University of Port Harcourt had given him an honorary doctorate degree for services to the arts. Curiosity made me ask him how much he gave for the professorial chair. I will not disclose that because then it should become an issue of uh, weighing what I've done in terms of, uh, you know, what I'm getting. No, I think that is between uh, the University of Port Harcourt and I. Many high-ranking universities in the world have made immense progress as a result of endowments of this nature. Many believe that Prince Yemisi Adedo Inshilon Professorial Chair in Fine Arts and Design will make room for new research opportunities. The University of Port Harcourt is grateful. My unique uniport. Yes, I read English there. <laughs> Indeed, things are looking up for the visual arts subsector. I'm of the opinion that other well meaning Nigerians should emulate Prince Yemisi Shilon. Now, to a segment that shows you how to pamper yourself, on our leisure segment today, we'll take a trip to a spa to get a facial treatment. Let's go. I'm going to do my special client, her facials today. All the products I'm going to use for her is uh, seaweed, and I have them here. I also have a forever living product, Korea product, but she, she prefers using seaweed products. This uh, seaweed product doesn't react to her skin. That's why she's always using it. Okay, but how do you know what um, a client reacts to? I'm going to use this magnifying lamp to test her skin, her face, that's this light, to know her skin types and all that. So after that, if the person has a, a lot of acne on her face, I will use um, the same body shop products, but vitamin C. Or I also use tea tree products because it clears all the acne on the person's face. So I have different products on different type of uh, problems. This is a clarifying toner. I'm going to use it to cleanse her face to remove all the dead cells first. So that's the first stage. I'm going to use exfoliator to scrub her face. She's only maintaining her face for wrinkles and all that. That's why I'm using seaweed products for her. Okay, so she doesn't want she, uh, wrinkles to ever... Is it possible? Yes. Not to have wrinkles the whole? At all. Purifying cleanser. What is it supposed to do for her? 
You can see her face has uh, multiple colors like uh, color decoloration. So this uh, purifying facial cleanser will clear her face right now. So that's why I'm using it. This facial steam. So what do you need to steam her face? To remove all the dead cells, all the oils, the dead oils inside her skin, and especially to open her pores. If you are always steaming your face, all these lines inside this place, all the wrinkles close to your nose, it will all be removed. The vapor has started coming out. Mom, is it too hot? A bit. Is it okay now? You can see the water where the vapor is coming out. I'm going to steam her face for one hour. This thing is extractor. And I'm going to extract her face to remove all the black hairs. I'm going to use tweezer now to remove hairs on her cheek. Is it too hot now? Okay. I'm going to use tweezer to wax her eyebrow now. You can use tweezer to shape her eyebrow or you use wax to wax it. But you know men also do facials. Yeah. So um, if it's a man, um, would you still do this? Yes. Depending on him. If he said I should wax his eyebrow, I would do that. Sometimes I wax their beard and the one that on top of their mouth, I use uh, this waxing pot, the waxing, to use it to wax it off. I also have a male client that I shave his eyebrow every two, two weeks. Okay, so how often do you recommend uh, facials in a month? Depending on your face, like mommy here, she only needs facials once in a month. But if you have a problem face, like uh, people that have acne, twice in a month. Mommy, I'll give you a little. Okay. So we call this one waxing pot. So I'm wiping her face now. We call this one mud mask. I'm going to max her face right now. I'm using the mat on her neck to firm it up. We are going to wait for 10 or 5 minutes for it to dry before I wash it off. I see there's a difference you now. This is the final stage. We call this cream moisturizer lotion SPF for sunscreen. I'm going to massage her face right now. We also lift her face. There are some points I'm going to touch on her face to release stress. Like all these places. And here. I'm also lifting her face at the same time. I'll also massage her head in case she's having headache. Okay, we are done. How long have you been doing facials? Well, far, far back as 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Is it a problem that made you start doing facials or you just wanted a good life? I think I, I'm a bit fashion conscious. I care about my body and I like looking good. So I didn't wait until I started having problems before I started it. Okay. How often do you come for your facials? Once a month on the average. Why do you always come to Vicky Spa for your facials? Well, before I knew Vicky, I had another therapist. She's good, but when I started with Vicky, I, I was just passing by and I saw the a, a, a spa place, Peeping and interviewed her, and she seems to know what she was talking about. So I gave her a try. And since then, I, I have not gone back to the other place. <laughs> and this is true, not because... You're recording. Mm -hmm. No, it's true. OK, so that, that since when? Since 2010. Wow. You can see her, the way her face is looking. She cannot have wrinkles till, till the end of her life. No way. So you, <laughs> can, see her. <laughs> you can see how she looks so fresh. And, uh, and and her skin too, because she also used me for body scrub, her steaming, and her massage. Facials is only six thousand now. But I also do something like uh, a package. You can also buy gifts and pay ahead for your friends or your families or your birthdays, your husband or your wife, for them to come and treat and pamper their skin here.
welcome back. We encourage you to love yourself, make relaxation a lifestyle. You can only live once. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed our episode today. Please visit our website www.artandleisure.com.ng. My name is Chioma Okwara. God willing, Art and Leisure will be back next week, same time. Love yourself. Love Nigeria.